In a previous video I made, I went over the Win11 Debloat tool, and it's right there in the name. It's a tool for debloating Windows 11 and Windows 10, and it removes unnecessary software, it changes some settings for privacy, and in the short that I made about this video, I uploaded it to TikTok and Instagram as well, and I received multiple comments about alternatives to Win11 Debloat that people really stand by, and so this video is all about five alternatives to Win11 Debloat that you can try for yourself if you so choose. And so this is where I want to throw up a quick disclaimer. I am not recommending or advising you to install or try these methods. This is totally up to you at your discretion, your choice. And I really advise you to do your own research if you do choose to try these things. So for each of these options, I'm gonna show you how to find them. I'll talk about the setup a little bit, and then I will show you the resource usage, the idling of the system after I've applied or done these setups. So the first one I tried is Ghost Spectre. It's a customized version of Windows, and this one is specifically Windows 10 Pro that I have installed. There is a Windows 11 version, but the only way I could find it was by going to this creator's YouTube channel and then going to one of the recent videos, and it's down in the description here that you can see Windows 11 Pro. And you start clicking through on these links to try and get to the actual download, and it just gets kind of sketchy. It gets really sketchy how you get led along here. And so I just didn't feel comfortable actually trying this version because you eventually, here, you get to this <laughs> Google Doc for some reason with another link here. I just didn't feel comfortable trying it. So uh, yeah, we went with Windows 10 version here, Windows 10 Pro. So here's my Ghost Spectre install running on a virtual machine. And so Ghost Spectre, it installs very similarly to Windows 10 in the conventional sense, even requiring or wanting that Microsoft account and internet connection. And you just get around that by having your internet unplugged when you install. And so it is customized Windows 10, so it looks pretty much the same in terms of the taskbar. They throw on a couple of their own custom links. There is a ghost toolbox that I read into a little bit, so you open this up to make some changes after the fact if you want to customize a little bit more. And they include CPU Z so that you can do a little hardware checking. So I did not connect this virtual machine to the internet at all, and I don't plan on it. Because of that sketchy kind of experience that I had trying to find the Windows 11 version of this download, going to page after page after page linked, it just felt so weird, so unsettling. Like, maybe I shouldn't connect the Windows 10 one to the internet either. So that's just my choice. If you guys want to try it out at home and do it, that's that's on you. Do your own research, figure it out. You know, if you feel comfortable, go for it. But anyway, so taking a quick look here at control panel in the installed programs, we only see two things installed and they're both very useful applications. So there is no bloatware installed on this machine, at least on the surface level that we can see in programs and features. Now looking at task manager in the performance tab, we see the CPU hovering around one to 2% usage, sometimes dropping down to zero. And the RAM is sitting at one gig out of eight usage. So this is a very, very lightweight install. Very, very lightweight. So it does seem to be very de-bloated. One other aspect I can show here is the install size after install. So after the install is complete, I gave each virtual machine here 50 gigabytes of storage space. So 49.9 minus the free space of 43.4, we get 6.5 gigabytes is the install size here. That is crazy small. Very, very small. Very lightweight install. Next one I tried is Windows X Lite. And this one is really interesting. The website design anyway, it's a throwback. It feels like I'm back in the 90s or something. It's really interesting. This one felt a little bit safer to me, at least in terms of the navigation to get to the download. It only kicked me over to one different site, a uh, pixel drain site for the download. So here is my Windows X Lite install running on a virtual machine. And just like with Ghost Spectre, this is a customized version of Windows. And this is Windows 11 this time. So everyone going forward will be Windows 11. That was the goal was Windows 11. The only reason I didn't go with Windows 11 on Ghost Spectre again was because the install or the download path was pretty sketchy. I just didn't feel comfortable going through with that. So Windows X Lite, Windows 11. I also kept this one offline because again, customized OS. So just like with Ghost Spectre, it installs 
very similar to the regular install of Windows 11, including the requirement for the Microsoft account and the internet connection. So just make sure you're disconnected from the internet. And you can also use the start space ms hyphen cxh colon local only command in the command prompt to uh, bring up the local account creation. So looking at programs and features on this one, we see nothing but remote desktop connection. So no bloatware here, again, on the surface at least in programs and features, no bloatware installed on this machine. And so looking at the task manager, the performance tab here on this one, we see around 1% CPU usage and RAM usage of 1.5 out of eight gigabytes. So also very lightweight. This one is very lightweight. If we look at the disk space usage, 49.8 gigabytes total, minus the free space of 45 gigabytes, we get 4.8 gigabytes of total install size. That's crazy. That's so small, such a small install size. Okay, so for the next two options, we are using this aim wizard to customize the Windows install after it's already done. So you're installing Windows 11, you have a fresh install of Windows 11, you run all of your Windows updates to make sure the system is fully up to date. And then you also update the Microsoft Store for any applications from the Microsoft Store to make sure those are completely up to date. And this is going by the guides here, so I'm just following what the guides made me do. Then you download the AIM Wizard and the playbook, the specific playbook for this customized install. And so the AIM Wizard runs that playbook. It brings up the settings for that specific customized install. You go through the steps, pick the settings that you want for the customization of your install, and then it finishes. So the first one I go through is Revy OS here, and this one's pretty straightforward. The website is clean. You go down here a little bit, you go to download Revy OS, and then you just scroll down a bit. You get a link here for get the AIM Wizard and for getting the playbook. And so here is my Revy OS install. And as part of the customization, it installed the Brave browser for me. That was something I could choose and uh, changed a bunch of settings. So let's check it out. So here in programs and features, we got the Brave browser, which I chose to add, right? So it's not bloatware. The remote desktop connection and the revision tool. So the Revy tool, this is just to make more customizations after the fact. So none of this is bloatware. So again, very, very lightweight in terms of on the surface, there's no bloatware. So here we are in Task Manager in the Performance tab and we're hovering around 2% CPU usage and 1.8 gigabytes out of eight for the RAM usage. And so looking at our disk drive here, we've got 49.2 gigabytes total. If we subtract the 34.6 gigabytes free, we get 14.6 gigabytes that our install is taking up. So this is definitely lighter weight than the default Windows 11 install. It's around 20 gigabytes. It's definitely lighter weight than that. So next up is Atlas OS. This is another one from that AIM wizard site. It lists both here, Atlas and Revy. And so Atlas OS, also pretty straightforward like the Revy one. You just click get started. You can either go to the installation guide here, or if you're already following the guide, then you click the bottom link here to go to your downloads. You just click to confirm here, and then you get your Atlas playbook, and then again, the link to the AIM wizard. So here I am inside of my Atlas install. So again, they give you this option with the playbook method. You know, what browser do you want to install? I chose Brave again, so that's why that's there. So this is the only one that installs all these Microsoft Visual C++ redistributables. That's interesting. And then it has the Brave install. Again, like I said, I chose to add that. So still very lightweight. None of this is bloatware by any means. So yes, very lightweight. No bloatware, at least on the surface level, in programs and features. Here we are in Task Manager in the Performance tab, and CPU is hovering around 1% usage, with RAM sticking around 1.7 out of 8 gigabytes usage. So if we look at our disk drive, we've got 49.2 gigabytes total, and if we subtract the 35.5 gigabytes of free space, we get 13.7 gigabytes as our install size. So still, much smaller than the default Windows 11 install of around 20 gigabytes. And the last one I wanna show here is called Chris Titus Tech WinUtil. And so this one is probably the most mentioned in the comments, the most uh, requested, or I don't know, the most liked. And so I felt very, very interested and obligated even to try this one out. And I'm sure the people who mentioned this one will be very happy to see that I actually tried it. So this is the GitHub page for the tool. 
And it is very highly rated, 38,000 stars, which is like upvotes, right, in GitHub, very highly rated. And so this one is similar in a way to the Atlas and the Revy OS installs. So you're just installing Windows 11 and then you're customizing it afterward with this tool. Okay, so this is my Windows 11 virtual machine where I ran the Chris Titus Tech WinUtil tool. I opted to install Brave, so that's why you see it there. So looking at programs and features, we see the Brave browser, we see Microsoft Edge, and we see remote desktop connection. So not really any bloatware at all, again, on the surface level there, just in programs and features. Here we are in Task Manager in the Performance tab, and our CPU is hovering around 2% usage, and our RAM is sitting at 3.2 out of 8 gigabytes used. So if we look at our drive space here, we've got 49.2 gigabytes as our total drive space. If we subtract the 27.7 gigabytes free, we get 21.5 gigabytes as our total install size. So what did we learn? What did this actually show? Well, in terms of the overall lightest weight OS, custom OS or Windows customization, that would be Windows X Lite with 1% CPU usage, 1.5 out of 8 gigabytes of RAM usage, idling, this is all idling, and then 4.8 gigabytes install size total. If we look at those playbook customizations, the lightest weight would be Atlas OS with 1% CPU usage, 1.7 out of 8 gigabytes RAM usage, and a overall install size of 13.7 gigabytes. And then the most surprising one for me, because so many people swore by it, is the Chris Titus Tech Tool. It did not seem to do as much debloating as these others at all. We look at the CPU usage, it's 2%, that's fine, that's pretty close, or the same as a couple of the others, but then the RAM usage is 3.2 out of 8 gigabytes? That's like, that's almost double the next highest. And then again with the overall install size, in terms of what it removed right from the install, we've got 21.5 gigabytes as the install size. The next closest is 14.6. That's a huge margin there. So what I learned from this, what I have discovered is that I think I would use some sort of combination of the two. I would probably use the Chris Titus Tech Tool for certain settings and removals and tweaks. But then the Win11 debloat for the applications to be removed, the actual bloat, the applications that want you want to get rid of to pare down the size of your install. But in terms of some of these other options, I'm actually really interested in playing around a lot more with the Atlas OS. That's the lightest weight playbook option. And it's really just interesting to me. I want to look into it more, do some more research, play around with it, test it more. That might be the way to go if you want a deep loaded Windows. Anyway, guys, that has been my dive into the options recommended by you guys in comments on my previous video. I got to try out all these options and see which ones I liked personally, which ones I thought were more deep loaded. And for me, the most deep loaded is Windows X Lite, but it makes me feel a little bit sketchy because it's a custom OS, right? Like compiled by somebody else. So the one that I lean towards for myself is Atlas OS or using a combination of the tool I already use, the Win11 deep bloat and the Chris Titus Tech tool. Well, let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.